timeout 31, I had a question coming out of section 3.5, numbers 41 and 45. I'm going to combo them because it's saying, hey, use the graphs of the transformations of the square root function to find a formula for each of these functions. And it doesn't necessarily say that for 45, but that is a square root function. So I'm going to, that's why I'm going to combo both of these. So just to remind us of what the square root function looks like. If I was to graph this, and again, this is one of your toolkit functions, I want to remind us that the domain here, because I do have a radical, let me just change colors for a moment, I need this radicand to be greater than or equal to zero, because anytime you have a radical, you've got to worry about the domain. Whatever's under that radical has to be positive or zero. So my domain is zero to infinity, meaning I'm only going to graph on the right half of the x-axis. And there's some pretty solid ordered pairs that we know about. So let me write a few of them, right? We know zero, zero is one of them. I know one, one is another, four, two is another. And then if I went all the way out here, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then I would have nine, three as another. All right, and there's my toolkit function. Let me go ahead and label everything. We said one, one, zero, zero, four, two. There's other ordered pairs in there, but I'm just picking the nicer ones. So now if I look at the graph that was given to me, which is this one here, it does look like the same shape as, as my square root function over here, but you can see it's now below the x-axis, right? Here's that x-axis, and here's my graph below it. And let's like take a look at a couple of ordered pairs there, right? So you can see I still have a 0, 0, but now I have 1, negative 1, right? And now I have 4, negative 2. So we can start to see that all of the y values are suddenly negative, right? Where they were positive before, they're negative. And really, this, this graph that I'm looking at, this one in the problem, it's, it's reflected or it's taking this, let me emphasize, this square root function and reflecting it over the x-axis. And if you want to transform this equation right here, by reflecting something over the x-axis, that means you put a negative symbol in front, or excuse me, well, in front of the function, but outside of the grouping symbols. So let me just write this here. If this was my original function, and I want to reflect it over the x-axis, I put a negative in front of it, and then that's, that's it. That's my transformation. So that's why you see me writing this up here. Now, 45 is a little bit different. Because what you can see is it wasn't the original square root function, right? Here would have been the original square root function. So the first thing I notice is that it's been shifted up one unit, right? It's shifted up one unit, and that's why you see that plus one being written out there. And this one, I also see it's in the wrong direction, right? Here you see me going left to right. This one's going out in that direction. This time we've reflected over the y-axis. And when that happens, you don't put a negative outside of the grouping symbol, you put the negative inside of the grouping symbol. So just to tell you where we were, or where we started and where we go, so I shift up one, so I add one outside the grouping symbol. But then I reflect over the y-axis, and I put a negative inside the grouping symbol. And for this particular function, the grouping symbol is that square root. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.